you're starting your online magazine or maybe you're extending your print magazine online, then this video is for you. I am V from Click180 Media and here we help periodical publishers build awesome businesses. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to create an actual digital magazine, how to put it online and what infrastructure is needed to promote it, to build your readers, audience and to find your first relevant advertisers. So let's jump into my computer and let's start. We are at my computer and let's talk how to create an online magazine or extend your print magazine online. It's very similar technique. So what is a digital or online magazine? So actually it's a distribution of magazines content via electronic means and the right digital edition doesn't mean that it needs to be exactly the same like you have for print. It only needs to maintain the same brand identity or publication identity. So uh, what is the best practice to create an online edition if you already have a print magazine or if you are planning to have a print magazine? So I'm sorry to disappoint you, but yes, you have to create separate layouts for print and for web because they just need to be different because it's different platforms and you need to think about each platform's users if you want to engage your audiences and grow the number of your subscribers. So if you simply take your print layout and put it on web, it's going to look something like that. Uh, and I'm <clears throat> just browsing this magazine on a regular, most popular by the way, resolution on my laptop. And uh, I don't think I can read anything. Yes, of course I have zoom options, but it's still uh, very hard and convenient and inconvenient to read it. You know? So if I'm, already a fan of this magazine, maybe I'll try hard to read it and I'll still get some value. But if I'm a new reader or if I'm online reader only, I'm not going to read this because it's, it takes too much effort for me to read. So the best, the best way for publishers is to create a separate digital edition. And that's very good thing to do because it brings so much more to the table. First of all, there are so many benefits. You can bring uh, additional value to your content by adding video, interactive elements, forms. Then you are going to have so much more advertising spots and advertising options. Uh, just think about only adding a click to your print ads, uh, just linking the ads to advertiser pages. That brings so much more value and your advertisers are going to love it. So that's actually only a few reasons to create different edition for web. Great, so I hope I convinced you to have two different layouts for a magazine if you're a print and digital publisher. And that's actually, believe me, that's the best way to do that, okay? So as soon as you have that figured, we need to figure out what publishing model you are going to use. So first, you can have a free content model uh, where your magazine is going to be funded by ads and sponsors. So it's going to look something like that, where you can, from reader's perspective, you only see some ads, but other than that, it's free. And of course you can subscribe, but subscription is only used to inform you that new issues are okay. So the second model is a subscription-based model and it's mostly, mostly funded by subscribers. It means you need to pay to read it from a reader's perspective. And it may also have some ads, you know, but uh, it's still a premium content and you may need to get a monthly or yearly subscription to read that magazine. So let's see how that looks. Uh, and I think Yes, so basically what I get, I get some uh, free teaser content. But if I want to read more, it asks me to subscribe, okay? So this is actually two most popular models that you can choose from. As soon as you figure out the right publishing model you are going to use, it's time to choose a digital format. And we figured out that people really love one of those three uh, magazine layouts uh, to read okay so this is very important step because that's how you, you are going to create the experience of reading 
your magazine to your readers, okay? So first example is a classic flip book. And I think this is one of the most popular layouts. And this is kind of classic uh, from left to right browsing experience. And it kind of feels like a real paper magazine. Of course, it's a little bit more modern and has some, some options. It has a table of contents. You can use thumbnails to navigate. Then you can print it. You can download the PDF of this magazine. You can read it in full screen. Then, of course, you can have some sharing options that are very important nowadays. Then you can subscribe. Uh, that is very important too. Uh, since this magazine is free, the subscription is for uh, informing you that new issue is up. And then you have following options on social, uh, social networks. So I think this is most loved layout and if uh, your magazine layout is correct and if you created it having a classic flipbook in mind you can really achieve re good experience and your readers are going to love it just very important to make it readable don't just convert your print version to flipbook create different one increase number of pages increase fonts just lay out everything nicely and it will look very good so what's really good about this format that you can uh, have a full control of pages and full control of all the objects in your magazine. So it means that if you put some object on the page 5, it's going to stay on the page 5. So it's kind of controlled layout, okay? Uh, and it's very have to have this uh, controlled layout if you're selling ads by position, by page size, uh, or something similar because you have the full control so for example if the advertiser paid for uh, inside front cover page you can just put it there and be sure that it's going to stay there uh, also it's very important when choosing the right flipbook software to make sure it's responsive and it works on every mobile device now we have some digital only formats and these are modern online magazine layouts. So these are kind of in between of uh, classic flipbook and magazine portal. This kind of keep uh, issue level isolation and this kind of have similar experience that paper magazine has. But those are fully dynamic. And uh, let's see them in action. Okay, so this is a spread version and it's really cool. It has all the selectable text. This is done in HTML, exactly the same way that all the websites are done. It has all the dynamic elements, sharing options, and this is fully responsive magazine. So it means it's going to work on any screen size uh, and it's also going to be uh, recognized by Google. It means uh, you can even optimize it for search engines. That is really cool. And uh, this magazine is different because it's always going to maintain readable text size on every screen. So this is a very cool layout. Let's see the other one. And the other one is uh, one of my favorites actually. And this is a long scroll format. It has a nice cover, the video, then it can have links. Uh, and it's basically uh, a whole magazine can be read by scrolling it down. And of course, it's fully responsive. It has responsive fonts, so it's going to be readable on every screen size. It has all the elements like issue archive. It has sharing options. It has a nice table of contents. And it's actually one of the best formats you can get for your online magazine. Uh, what all these magazine has in common is that uh, they, starting Flibo Classic, they all maintain the same uh, linear layout and uh, magazine 
issue level isolation. So it means that the reader always understands uh, where he is in the magazine. He, they see the pages always and in all of those three models you can sell ads by page, by position in the magazine, uh, of course adding all the digital formats like banner ads, all the dynamic ads, videos and so on. And you can even charge by number of clicks, number of impressions and so on and on. Okay, and the final digital format is the digital only format and that is a portal and it looks similar to that uh, where the magazine is an actual website. So uh, this is actually a demo magazine, but it has an issue archive where you can browse through all the issues and then if you click on the issue or go inside the issue, you will see the uh, picture of the magazine cover, then you are going to see uh, the TOC, table of content, and what's inside the issue. Uh, then you are going to see the departments, uh, editor's letter, news, and so on. Uh, and then if you click on the link, you go into a uh, feature teaser page. And this is not finished, but you go to teaser feature page. And then if you go click on the action button that is going to be here, you are going to be taken to the actual feature. So this is a very powerful website structure. And let's go to the next slide and I'll tell you more about it. Since we have decided our digital format, we need to build a website to promote our magazine, right? So as I just told you before, our uh, magazine portal or magazine website uh, you kind of need to have the same structure on every digital format so this is a basic sitemap let's see it uh, bigger okay so this is a basic sitemap of a magazine website so you need to have two menus the primary menu is created to your primary audience that is interested in your magazine and your content to your product actually and the secondary menu that is like business-like and that is created to your potential partners, advertisers and other businesses that are interested in your company, okay? So on the primary menu, it's very important to have uh, two types of content. So the free content that can uh, be news pages like industry news, new products, then free content, maybe some how-to videos, some instructions and stuff like that. Then it's very important to have a blog to, to write some casual or trending content and have it released uh, on the regular basis much more often than your magazine is released. Uh, then it's very important to have a subscribe page where people can see the form to join your mailing list. And it's very important to have this as a separate page, not only as a pop-up or an element embedded to the page because you kind of want to have it separate to link people to it. So you can share it on social media, you can have it in your magazines, you can have it in your free content, you can have it as your call to action block on your blog, and so on, so on, so on. And also the contact us page that is a must on every website. This can have some of your sales people contacts, maybe some editorial people contacts and so on. So let's talk about the magazine part now. Okay, so this is very important to keep this structure because remember we just talked about different digital formats that you can have. So this structure and this website kind of works with every of them. And more than that, it works with any subscription model. Okay, so uh, just to have this magazine layout, it means when you, this, this link can be called magazine or issue archive, whatever you call it or whatever. Uh, is more better practice in your niche. So on this page, you need to have a chronological order of your issues with the very recent issue at the top of the page, okay? And it needs to have uh, an issue name or release date, and then some teaser content and uh, or TLC and the call to action button that links to the issue page. 
on the issue page you need to have a uh, image of a cover, then the issue name, then some teaser content, then the table of the content, uh, of the content, TLC, uh, then the call to action button that says read the magazine. And this is very important to have page like this, because when we create page like this, we can have a landing page of your issue or of every issue. Your every issue has a landing page, so you can promote it and you can send traffic to this page. And this page has a call to action button that links to whatever of your digital formats. Okay? It doesn't matter if you have a classic flipbook, modern flipbook, or even your magazine articles are on this website as a magazine portal or a website. You still need to have a call to action. And you can still link to that page. Okay? So uh, if people are not convinced yet and they don't click call to action yet and don't, they don't want to read the whole issue from that page, uh, you can allow them to click on the TOC and on your features from the issues. So let's say they click on the first feature from the issue and they go to the feature page. The feature page has its own landing page and it's not the actual feature, but it's a page with some teaser content about what is in the feature with some images from the feature and call to action button. This is very important to have a landing page for each of your features and not to give the actual feature away because of two reasons. Because you want to link to your digital format. For example, if you have a flipbook or if you have a modern magazine layout, you need to link to it. If you have the article embedded to this website and as a part of this website, you still need to have this button and when button is clicked, then you need to reveal the whole feature, you know, but uh, first of all, you only want to show the feature. Uh, there is another, uh, the teaser text, there is another, another reason for that is because this method works for both free and paid subscription models. So even if you have a paid subscription, you still are going to have the same pages, just link people to subscription page as soon as they click call to action button. So it's very powerful and important website structure that you need to have. And I think it's the core of having an online magazine. So many people are only going to tell you to create a flip book of your magazine, but this is actually the main part of successful online magazine. So let's assume you, we have this part covered and you're already thinking or already have a magazine website built, okay? So the next part is to plan your multi-platform content distribution and start to attract your audience. And this is very important part because you kind of need to work your content the right way, the smart way. Uh, to attract the right people and eventually make them your magazine subscribers or paid subscribers, okay? Uh, so this kind of has uh, two types of tasks. Uh, some tasks are manual and some are automated. So, uh, and in the center of everything is a magazine publication. So let's say you have your uh, actual magazine and publication and you kind of need to promote it because let's say you have a paid magazine, okay? And you can't actually share the content for free. So how are you gonna attract the visitors and how you uh, let your potential audience know uh, that your content is uh, very good, that your content is premium and that is worth paying money for it. Uh, you're gonna create some teaser content and you're gonna give some free content away in order to make them subscribe. So there are multiple ways to do that. So let's say you have a magazine and uh, some content about something, okay? So first of all, you can create some blog posts from that and put those blog posts on your website so people can find those blog posts using search engines on me or maybe some social networks. And simply, if they like it, they can subscribe uh, to your mailing list or uh, yeah, they can even subscribe to your premium content and pay you money. You know? But uh, in the regular case, they 
Thursday will subscribe to your mailing list and then you're gonna convert them by sending some uh, newsletters or using some email marketing techniques, okay? Then from the same content, you can create some social media posts and post them on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, and so on. It depends on your niche. In some cases, Pinterest works really well, and some LinkedIn, and some maybe Instagram is your horse, you know. So it's very important to recognize that and use the right ones. So as soon as you create a social media post on one of those social networks, uh, you kind of generate traffic and you let people know about something, you know. So you want to uh, make people visit your website and they then, if they visit your website, you have some free content there, they are going to be led to subscribe. So they are going to become your email subscribers. You can do the same with video. So it's kind of similar that I'm doing now. You can take some content from your magazine just a little part of it and create a video about that then you can put it on your website you can put it on youtube or you can put it on facebook and ask people to uh, come over and read more about that on your website you know so you need to get people to visit your website and as soon as they visit you can uh, engage them and make them interested with your free content and make them subscribe for more so again we have subscribers then in some cases and in, in some technical niches you can create slideshows on or infographs you can create them you can put them on slideshare or on your website and again we want to attract visitors to our website okay uh, you can research very easily what people in your niche are looking for especially in technical niches people are looking for uh, infographs and they are willing to exchange it for the email address for sure you know so if you have some uh, valuable technical information just uh, hire a graphic designer and make some nice infographs um, very nice easy to, to understand slideshow and people will definitely subscribe uh, in exchange for that to your mailing list then you can make a podcast because it's Oops, sorry. It's very important because nowadays people consume content in so many different ways. You know, people like to listen for something when they drive a car or maybe they go for a run. You know, so it's very important to convert your content to uh, podcasts because that's the way to let people know about you. And again, they are going to convert as a website traffic and then you can convert them to subscribers if they, if they like your content and if they like it valuable if they find it valuable right and finally you can create some case studies or white papers again this can be done from your premium magazine content i think that's really easy to do for you if you if you are a publisher and you have some editors working for you so it's kind of common knowledge practice that people uh, need to leave their address in order to download the white paper or case study you know so they are going to subscribe to your email list right so these are just a few of the main options to make people subscribe okay and these tasks are marked as manual tasks because you can uh, because you kind of need to create that content by hand or using a human label okay then if you have a nice uh, multi-platform publishing uh, system or your website is professionally made you can have some automated uh, content conversion tasks done for example as soon as you publish your content uh, uh, your magazine content on your website once it kind of creates uh, six formats to you for free you know automated so it kind of creates your archive then it, cr it creates a feed for mobile magazine news feeds on Google Play and iTunes that's very important because uh, you can reach new undiscovered audiences there uh, then it creates the actual product the responsive and the latest digital edition the actual magazine uh, it doesn't matter if you're running a subscription or free model a subscription based or free model uh, so actually you just post your content as text and pictures and the system creates uh, your magazine layout for you, you know. 
Uh, this kind of works with uh, modern magazine layout and uh, website magazine layout editions. And if you're using a classic flipbook, you're still gonna need to do that by hand. Uh, also, it populates and tags all the content to site search. Uh, then uh, it optimizes all the content you posted for search engines by adding all the uh, structured data uh, and metadata. And finally, it, it generates data to use for your newsletter so you can use it for email marketing. So this is kind of how your multi-platform content distribution uh, network should work. And this is the really powerful way to build your mailing list and run a profitable magazine. So what's next? When all is done, what's next? So we already talked about how to bring some visitors to your website and you need to start converting them to subscribers, okay? As soon as you uh, convert them to subscribers and build your mailing list, you can start sending them your newsletter. Your newsletter can be some of your free content to bring value to them and keep them engaged because people still need to look forward for your newsletter and get some free valuable content so you good so you get good email open rates uh, and as soon as you have that and as soon as you see that people are kind of your email list is growing people are opening your newsletters uh, they're visiting your website it's ready you are ready then to start communicated with, communicating with your advertisers and you can start selling ads on your website you can start selling ads on your uh, digital edition and this is very important uh, to create some advertising material before you start talking to your advertisers in, in order to do that you need to create a page on your website for advertising purposes then you need to create a media kit with all the pricing data and what else i would suggest you to do is to go an extra mile and create an advertisement portfolio so you can kind of expose and show how all of your advertising options would look in the real life for example if you're running a uh, some some modern digital edition or a classic flipbook you still need to show that you have so much more options than just a, a simple image on the page or you know something like they have in print magazines so you need you kind of need to educate your advertisers to sell more ads and finally uh, you need to find for other monetization options that fits your niche in some cases you can start uh, sending email blasts to your uh, subscribers uh, promoting your advertiser products then you can start running ads to them by uploading your email list to Google and uh, Facebook ad networks then you can start running some affiliates that are uh, fitting well to your niche for example if you find some good products you can just tell, tell them by advising your email subscribers that this product is very good by also adding a link to that product with your uh, affiliate tracking ID so you get some commission from that and so on there are so many options and if you have audience built sky's the limit what you can do you just need to do that uh, very wisely and not to start losing your subscribers uh, so again i hope this kind of uh, painted the whole picture of what you need to start your online magazine and yeah if it sounds like a lot of lot of work for you it is actually a lot of work but the good, good news that we can help you and if you want to find out more about uh, becoming an online publisher and having your own online magazine just visit our website it's flip180.pub or flip180media.com so we look forward to seeing you and good luck starting your magazine or converting your print magazine to digital edition <laughs>